Caitlin Higgins and I'm the director of the outpatient program at Recovery Centers of America at Raritan Bay. I was asked to share my top five most important things in providing telehealth treatment to our clients when those clients are not in front of us. The COVID-19 pandemic created very unique challenges for substance abuse treatment, but we very quickly had to figure it all out in order to continue saving lives and providing quality of care when people could not come on site at the same time. Number one, which might seem like a no brainer, would be just having the proper equipment. So that's not only just having a laptop or a computer with a working microphone and webcam speakers, but also fast and dependable Wi-Fi. That's something we may have taken for granted and didn't realize how much that we would depend on it, but that tremendously impacts the quality of care that we can offer when our Wi-Fi is lagging, the connection is poor, it creates a little bit of a mess. Um, in addition to that, at RCA, we have purchased rally bars for all of our group rooms, which are awesome pieces of equipment that have really fantastic cameras, really great speakers, a very sensitive microphone. So our clients that are on, is, on our Zoom with our clients that are on site feel like they're together in one room. It doesn't feel as separated as I'm looking to group on a computer versus I'm on site with other people with me. It allows it to feel as, as one cohesive group. Number two would be the expectations of the program, what you want your clients to, how you want your clients to participate and also enforcing that and making it clear to them. So, you know, the expectation just because it is via telehealth, you're still coming to the groups, you're still making your individual appointments, your camera is going to be on. We all know how easy it is to multitask during any kind of Zoom or Teams meeting, right? And that's the same thing for group therapy as well. However, in therapy, that has to be your primary focus. With your camera on, you are less likely to be doing other things, moving around, getting distracted. You're not going to be around other people. You're going to be in a quiet, comfortable space where you can really dedicate your attention to your peers that you're in group with to really get and give the most support possible. Another one is adjusting our policies. You know, there are a lot of things that have come up with telehealth treatment that weren't necessarily an issue, a concern, a thought when all services were offered in person. Um, you know, as far as missing appointments, it's a lot easier to miss appointments, fall under the radar when you're only attending via Zoom. So we have enforced a much stricter miss visit policy and the clients are very aware of that, that if you don't come to your appointment, we're calling you. If you don't answer, we're calling your emergency contact. And after some time, if we don't hear back from either party, we might go even further, call the local police department to send a wellness check to really make sure that you're safe. And we want to deliver the message that just because you are not on site, that you're home, you are via telehealth, you're on Zoom, you are just as important and we are just as committed to helping you as we are the people that do come here on site. Number four would be, we had to come up with a whole new drug screening process. So when all of our services were on site, we would just grab clients as they were here and be able to test all of them, do their urine drug screens that are required for our program, for insurance, possibly anyone that's referring them to treatment and just for that level of accountability as well. And I think number five is maybe one of the most important telehealth best practices would be engaging our clients, making the Zoom meetings fun and interactive, really getting creative and not just logging on to a Zoom meeting and getting lectured about skills or having an open discussion, right? When we're all together in one room, we can do fun icebreaker activities, we can do art therapy, other kinds of creative group activities that are a little bit harder to do when you're attending via Zoom. But our therapists have gotten very, very creative on how to incorporate our telehealth clients into our creative activities, make the groups really engaging, not boring. They're not doing the same thing every day. It's different. The clients want to come back. They want to keep learning because they're learning serious things, but in a fun way.
What's most important is that just because our clients are attending via telehealth, they're still getting the same services that they would in person, right? Zoom, Teams, whatever telehealth platform you're using should not interfere or impact with their treatment and what they're gaining from it. We need to keep our clients engaged. We need to keep them accountable. We need to help them just as much as the clients who can show up in person. And there are so many things that are so important to telehealth and I just only touched on five, but these were the five that really stuck out to me when I was asked this question that I felt was really imperative to share with, with everyone on how to get our clients most engaged and give them the most support while navigating this whole new world of hybrid, in-person, telehealth, and these variety of services. And even though we are moving more towards in-person services here at RCA and we're seeing that a lot more frequently, I don't think the option of telehealth is ever going to go away at this point. We have come so far in overcoming so many barriers to getting treatment, whether it's distance, transportation. I woke up late. I don't feel that great today. Nothing, not as many things can stand in the way of getting quality substance abuse treatment, at Recovery Centers of America with how we've implemented our hybrid programming for outpatient. Thank you so much.